Let me just say, John's more than just a rock star. I, wanna, I want you to know that, really. He's a man who knows that to those who much is given, much is required. You know, before we came on stage tonight, we were talking about Camden and what he is going to do to help us build affordable housing and make sure everyone has a better life. And he is the kind of guy, kind of guy, that gives as much as he's ever received. He's a great dad, a great husband. Dorothea someplace out there, and I'm a beautiful lady, and thank you. But whether you're building homes for Habitat for Humanity or raising awareness uh, for pediatric AIDS like we were doing up in, um, in Newark about uh, six, seven months ago, Special Olympics, or whether he's organizing uh, major trips to New Orleans or supporting the homeless in uh, Red Bank, John puts his soul into making the world a better place. Let's hear it for John Bon Jovi. I don't know about you, but I kind of get my spirits lifting when I'm listening to those songs and improving our world of generosity. I was sort of picking up on a phrase, take my hand and we'll make it, I swear. What do you think? We will make it, right? John knows that you all are our brother's keeper. You all are our sister's keeper. All of us are in this. And so who says you can't go home? Because we can. We will here in a little bit. But let's give it up one more time for John Bon Jovi, and thank you very much. I also want to thank all of you for being here tonight. I tell you, when I walked into the room and I looked up in this place, uh, I've been coming here since it opened in 1993. It's an extraordinary, extraordinary facility that is the heart of the arts in New Jersey. And it felt so good to see my family, to see so many friends and supporters and people who believe in the American promise and they believe in New Jersey's promise. So, Thank you all from the bottom of my heart for showing up. I really, really appreciate it. By the way, I can't see a single one of you other than less the ones down here in the front row. But one of those guys I see is Brian Schweitzer. Uh, you know, he's the big sky governor, big dream governor of Montana. Let's hear it for him. You may not have noticed, but I think he's setting a trend for second-term governor's apparel, casual. What do you think, with one of those ties, they work in New Jersey? I will tell you, he's also setting an incredible trend of progressive governance in a state that he turned from red to blue. Let's hear it one more time for Brian Schweitzer. I also want to thank, I want to thank Joe Cryan and Julie and all of the folks that made this happen tonight. Nothing like this happens without a lot of work from a lot of people doing a lot of things that you don't see every day. And I want to say to every one of those folks that volunteered their time and worked hard, and all of you being here, this is one heck of a way to kick off a campaign. Thank you all very much. And I think there are just a few labor folks out there, too. And I want to say thank you to organized labor. You folks have stood with me, and I assure you I'm going to stand with you. Thank you. I need that. You know, being governor of New Jersey is honestly the highest honor of my life. Serving our people is my highest calling. You know, John said it right. You look into somebody's eyes and you made their life better. You know why you're a governor. You know why you're in public service. And there are a lot of my friends here in the Assembly and the Senate and mayors and other people that do this every day. There is a real joy. Thank you all to all of them for what they do. But it's, that's the reason that I'm going to keep fighting for the values that you and I share. Last year, President Obama challenged Americans to build better schools, to fix our broken health care system, to honor our seniors, to protect the most vulnerable, 
and to be good stewards of our earth. We've been fighting for these things in New Jersey for the past four years, often with Washington working against us. And now with a partner in the White House, and I think you've heard that a few times tonight, a partner in the White House, our great new president, Barack Obama, there is absolutely no limit to what we can achieve. You hear it? Yes, these are tough times. Everybody knows that. This is really a tough time in the neighborhood and everywhere, and it's a tough time around the world. And given today's struggles, there's a temptation by some in our society that to give up on the dreams, give up on the dream of the American promise. Well, I know that's not in your minds, it's not in my mind, and it's not in New Jersey, right? We believe in our dreams. We believe in our values and we know that if we work hard, we can make our dreams come true. On this point, let me be clear. This campaign is not about me. This campaign is about us and all of the people that we try to serve as the governor, as the legislature, and all the people that are involved in public service. It's about all of us together. It's about the choices we make as a people and as a state. This November, voters are gonna have a very clear choice between very different sets of values and very different visions of the future. I like the values and the visions that Barack Obama and John Bon Jovi articulate in words and deeds. How about all of you? I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Tough times require tough decisions. It's unfortunate, but it's real. But more importantly, they require the right decisions. That's why this fall's election's about choosing what is right for New Jersey, for our children, and our future. My opponent says we invest too heavily in kids. You heard some of this earlier. He makes fun of an investment that we should be making in preschool education. That's a wrong choice for New Jersey, right? We ought to be investing in our kids. We believe every child has a right to be inspired and challenged every day in the schools that are the best in the world. And we got a lot of teachers here tonight. Are you doing a great job? Let's hear it from you. We've got the best schools in America right here in New Jersey. That's why we're increasing funding for education. It's why we're committing billions of dollars to school construction and jobs. And like Joe said, that's why we broke a 40-year impasse on school funding with a formula that's rooted in a child's educational needs rather than our zip code. We're doing all of this because all of us know, and New Jersey knows at the bottom of its heart, that the quality of our education defines our common future and a child's birthright. We're making the right choices for New Jersey. My opponent says we should shortchange our children's health care. Boy, I'll tell you, he's not looking at Emily. He believes our kids should be left to the whims of the free market and HMOs and profiteers. Those are the wrong values for New Jersey. We believe health care is a right, not a privilege, right? That's why we're expanding our family care program to cover every child in New Jersey. 50,000 more have already signed up. We're going to get every child signed up. When the Bush administration tried to kick those 10,000 kids off of New Jersey's family care, we said no. And you know what we did? We went to court and made a federal case out of it. And you know what else happened? We won. New Jersey won, and we got those kids insured. We're making the right choices for New Jersey. Republicans say that we can drill our way to energy independence. You've probably heard this, drill baby, drill. Maybe that looks good on a bumper sticker, but that's the wrong choice for New Jersey. <laughs> New Jerseyans everywhere value our beaches and our shorelines. We believe that we have a fundamental moral obligation to leave our world cleaner and more pristine for future generations. That's why we did the nitty gritty of putting together an energy master plan that will cut greenhouse gas emissions by over 20% by 2020. That's why we've installed more solar panels, Brian, than any other state in the nation except California in the last three years. 